Grant Cardone personally led a group of Scientologists in a vicious attack against a famous Scientology acting coach named Milton Kitsellis. Hi everyone, Aaron here and welcome back to the channel. Today I want to share with you a story that shows what a bootlicking brown noser Grant Cardone is for David Miscavige, desperately and relentlessly seeking David Miscavige's approval. This story is also going to serve as a, an example of, as a glimpse into, the relentless and voracious snitching culture that exists in Scientology. The snitching culture in Scientology is likely to become a central theme in the upcoming criminal prosecution against Scientologist Danny Masterson. Scientology policy requiring members to constantly report on each other, to, to submit written reports called KRs or knowledge reports on each other to send these reports to the ethics officer for even the smallest perceived violations. This policy is how Scientology is certainly going to be brought into the criminal proceedings, the criminal prosecution against Danny. So we'll discuss the details of the Grant Cardone story first, and then we'll revisit how any of this relates to the Danny Masterson case. The details of the story have been reported in more than one location, but I'm gonna be reading them from a blog post Marty Rathbun did in June, 2011. Marty Rathbun was one of the most senior executives in Scientology. He left Scientology and became one of the most outspoken, most effective whistleblowers against Scientology. Miscavige later succeeded in bringing Marty Rathbun to his knees. Marty went crawling back to Daddy Miscavige for an undisclosed financial sum. Probably. But during the time that Marty was helping blow the whistle on Scientology, he was a wealth of information, and this blog post is an example of that. So let's take a look at some of this. Grant Cardone, turnaround or turncoat king? OT8, Grant Cardone has apparently pulled off the con game of his life. Cardone has been awarded his own reality TV series, showing him in action as an inspirational motivator. Judging by the trailers for the show, Cardone passes himself off as a man appealing to the integrity and inner strength of folks. For reasons outlined below, I believe Cardone has no business telling anyone what inner strength and integrity are. Grant Cardone is a David Miscavige groupie. He is a self-proclaimed, self-made multimillionaire. A motivated journalist or a half-decent lawyer in a deposition wouldn't take long to find out that how those multi-millions were made don't quite match Grant's own marketing campaign about himself. Well, I can tell you that the word on the street when I was still in Scientology is that Grant had made his first millions by selling cocaine in Miami. Probably. I think anyone familiar with Grant would not be uh, shocked to hear that that would be a possibility. And I can't tell you for a fact that it's true. I can just tell you that uh, that was the word within the world of Scientology. And it happens not to be a detail that Grant includes uh, in the version of the story that he tells about how he became a successful uh, entrepreneur. Cardone has made huge financial contributions to the Church of Scientology and its front groups with the stated intent of ingratiating himself with Miscavige. He hung around the Scientology Celebrity Center, continuously wheedling his way onto the lines of celebs. According to a close friend, Cardone was driven to be the next Tony Robbins, and he wanted Miscavige and the Scientology celebs to take him there. Judging by the fact of the new series, the latter had some success along this line. I don't know Grant personally, and like all the rest of the Miscavige fawners, I always give them the benefit of the doubt, but Cardone screwed a very close friend of mine for having the courage to stand out of line to do something about the wholesale abuses of Miscavige and his cult. Tiziano Lugli's story is by now well known to those who frequent this blog. Tiziano considered Cardone a friend. Cardone was one of those who disconnected on the orders of David Miscavige before Tiziano was even declared. There apparently is nothing Cardone won't do for David Miscavige. But this is not the first time Cardone has acted as a ruthless turncoat at the behest of David Miscavige. A bit of background is in order. The late Milton Katselis was one of the most productive disseminators in the history of the Scientology religion. Milton was the founder and operator of the Beverly Hills Playhouse Acting School. It was through Milton that most of Scientology's high profile celebrities made their way in, either directly or indirectly. Milton was very independent. Milton was a very active Scientologist until sometime after Miscavige's coup d'etat. Milton never bought into the little dictator and his depersonalization technology and culture. That fact was a constant thorn in Miscavige's rear end. About four years ago, Cardone was put through the OT8 eligibility meat grinder. Having quite a history of con and deceit, Cardone needed to do something dashing and daring that would convince church officials he was loyal to David Miscavige above anyone else, most particularly L. Ron Hubbard. So a quick explanation here. 
OT eligibility is this gauntlet that every Scientologist has to go to before being permitted to begin their next OT level. And it's basically where the Scientologist has to prove why he should be allowed, he should be granted the privilege of being allowed onto the next OT level. And a Scientologist does this by showing evidence of how dedicated they are to protecting and defending Scientology. So what Marty is saying here is that Grant had such an extensive history of being a con artist and deceiving people that he that the bar was very high for Grant to prove why he should be allowed to go on to OTA. And that this fact, this is what prompted the public attack against Milton Kitsellis that we're about to read about. Cardone found the perfect head to return to his master Miscavige, Milton Kitsellis. Cardone decided to use rumor and innuendo he had heard about Kitsellis in an attempt to destroy him through Miscavige ethics tech. The following is the text of an email Cardone sent to many Scientologists affiliated with Scientology's Celebrity Center, purportedly assigning Katselis the ethics condition of treason. So this email, my understanding is that Grant sent this email to hundreds of Scientologists who either were or had been students of Milton's at the Beverly Hill Playhouse. Subject, Milton Katselis Treason Condition Limited Publication. It has come to my attention that Milton Katselis continues to go unhandled and it is my intention to stop him finally. The fact that so many of you have left his school and written KRs has not ultimately handled this being as he continues to go unhandled and will continue to wreak havoc and spread his aberration until his ethics are put in. It is a failure of the individual group members to control their fellows that makes a group hard for all to live and work with, LRH. I am not an artist as many of you, but I know the importance of the artist to our society as LRH states. As I write this email to you, Elena gets an email from another artist who says, I just left the Beverly Hills Playhouse as I could no longer handle the personal life critiques anymore. It is a terrible shame that this young artist may never reach for Scientology due to any association she has had with Milton and the disaffected that stay around him. Now, I find this sentence uh, noteworthy because he's not saying that Milton caused someone to leave Scientology. He's actually complaining by the student leaving the Beverly Hills Playhouse. This is now a student who may not in the future reach for Scientology. It seems like quite a stretch, but it also goes to show you that Grant is viewing any legitimate business that is run by an on-purpose Scientologist to be something that also doubles as a recruiting tool for Scientology. If anybody should be concerned that a student left the Beverly Hills Playhouse, it should be Milton Kitsellis. He lost a student, he lost a paying customer. Instead, Grant is saying, how horrible is it that a student left the Beverly Hills Playhouse and now this person may in the future not be interested in Scientology. Do you see what I mean? Okay, let's keep going. Okay, he continues by continuing to give an LRH quote. The true character of these people, the SP, is usually masked in many ways. They are expert only in deception and can take on any guise. Milton Katsellis, I believe to be even more dangerous than others as he wears our clothing, is an opinion leader to the artist and suggest that he is one of us. His actions do not support that he is one of us. The facts. Milton Katsellis has made no bridge progress since old OT5 completion over 14 years ago. From time to time, he will get an action done and then disappear again. Milton Katsellis does not attend local or international events. COB stated at last year's event, if you are not on board, it is suppressive. COB of course refers to David Miscavige, who is known in Scientology as the chairman of the Board Religious Technology Center, or COBRTC, or most commonly just COB. Milton Katsellis does not participate in any of the church's expansion efforts. Milton Katsellis does not attend or participate in any direct hard sell dissemination projects to grow our church and make others aware of our efforts. Milton Katsellis has not made any direct contributions to ideal orgs, IAS, or any other of COB's command intentions. Milton Katsellis does not demonstrate being any part of the team of Scientologists who are doing what they can to make a difference. Milton Katsellis has not gotten behind any of the social betterment programs our church spearheads. Milton Katsellis has encouraged a member of his school not to report him to ethics. 
Milton Katselis kicked an actress out of his class because this person chose to do a clear cycle and missed classes without approval from him. In this case, uh, the use of the word clear cycle just refers to going to get some auditing during a time when the student was supposed to be in class. Milton Katselis has people that are disaffected and blown from Scientology working in the administrative portion of his school. Another incredible statement because this shows us clearly that a true believing, to a true believing Scientologist, even employing someone in your business who was a Scientologist and has drifted away is considered a serious ethical violation. The people of Clearwater should keep this in mind as David Miscavige and Scientology continue to make more inroads in purchasing commercial real estate in downtown Clearwater and in only renewing leases of businesses owned by Scientologists. Even though many people like to say that, strictly speaking, these companies have nothing to do with Scientology. Don't forget, let this serve as an example. These companies are not allowed to employ people who don't look favorably upon Scientology. Don't forget that. Per ethics book, page 253, number eight, any person who knew of an outness or crime and failed to report it and thus became an accessory receives the same penalty as the person being disciplined as the actual offender. It is my right per ethics gradient 13 to take the next action. Consider this a limited publication that I personally hold Milton Katselis in treason to our group. Please forward this to others that will benefit from this knowledge as it is true, sincerely, Grant Cardone. Well, in Grant's haste and eagerness to show Miscavige what a good little boy he was, Grant uh, didn't really consider what a massive public relations nightmare it would be if his email got out for a variety of reasons. So Marty explains, shortly after sending out the above email, the church caught wind of it, recognizing the potentially catastrophic public relations ramifications of such a communication, Cardone was ordered to destroy all evidence immediately. Cardone then sent out the following email to recipients of the first email. Grant sent this follow-up email only one day after sending the first email. It says, this is regarding the email that I sent on Milton. One, immediately please destroy all forms of the email I sent you. Two, do not forward that email in any form. Three, please forward this communication to whomever you may have forwarded the original communication. Four, this was not a correct action on my part as it was off lines and should have been coordinated with the correct terminals within the church. Five, it is my understanding that the proper terminals are presently addressing the situation regarding Milton. Six, any questions you have or information you have should be coordinated directly with your MAA. MAA means master at arms, which is what Scientologists call an ethics officer in the C organization. Seven, it was not my intent to create a negative effect of any kind. This action was my attempt to better conditions, and for that to happen, it should have been properly coordinated through the proper terminals so that it is a safe environment for everyone. Eight, lastly, I know that the tech of ethics and justice written by L. Ron Hubbard and promoted by the Church of Scientology produces a safe environment when applied exactly and when correctly coordinated. Sincerely, Grant Cardone. <laughs> What a reversal. He was trying to kiss ass for his OT eligibility and look like a good little boy, but he ended up making it so much worse. Note that Cardone does not apologize for having attacked Milton with vicious defamation. Instead, he notes, it is my understanding that the proper terminals are presently addressing the situation regarding Milton. The damage had been done to Katselis' reputation among his many Scientologist friends. Less than a year and a half later, Milton passed away from heart failure. Whether the propaganda campaign played any role in the timing of his death, I do not know. I do know this with certainty. Milton Katselis was treated by David Miscavige and his minions like every other great figure in the history of Scientology. That is, reputation destroyed, friends and family turned on them, betrayed, isolated, and left to die in infamy. Turnaround King, or is it Turncoat King? So that's the story. I've been doing a lot of Grant Cardone content recently. I enjoy poking fun and ridiculing Grant for his very obviously fraudulent business activities. But to me personally, criticizing Grant's business activities is more a form of entertainment. What I find truly most objectionable about Grant Cardone is how through his public advocacy, his public promotion of Scientology, Grant Cardone enables this destructive cult and enables David Miscavige. And he tries to make Scientology seem like just a practical way of improving your life. But let this story serve as an example of what Scientology really is to Grant Cardone. To Grant, Scientology is something wherein you are either with us or you're against us. And if you're not with us, we will destroy you. 
Okay, so that's the Grant Cardone story. What are the takeaways from this story that apply to the Danny Masterson criminal prosecution? Well, the first takeaway is the emphasis that you see in the email that Grant wrote. The emphasis that is placed on the responsibility Scientologists have to report one another. And that's even for minor violations. KRs are always flying in Scientology because if it's found out that you were, did not write a KR of something that you knew about, you're on the hook for the penalties. It's a self-defense mechanism in Scientology. So the things that Danny Masterson is accused of doing to Scientologists, to even non-Scientologists, these are things that were written and documented by many people many times and these reports were sent to many people. The second takeaway is this mentality of you are either with us or you're against us and if you're not with us we will destroy you. Now in Scientology it is considered a violation of the rules to ever report another Scientologist to the authorities and at least one of Danny's victims who was at that time was still a Scientologist was either asking permission to or was threatening to report Danny to the actual authorities. Danny's victims were not satisfied that his crimes were being properly dealt with internally and they wanted actual justice. And at that moment, you have two Scientology policies kicking into effect that are unavoidable, are undeniable, and when stacked on top of each other, are very bad for Scientology. You have the, if you pose any threat to us, we will destroy you. That part of Scientology policy led to Scientology obstructing justice in this case. And the other part of Scientology policy of always putting everything in writing and constantly submitting reports led Scientology to document in writing just exactly how they were obstructing justice in this case. Those are the two takeaways from this Grant Cardone story that apply to the Danny Masterson prosecution. And if those are the takeaways from this story that apply to the Danny Masterson case, then let the takeaways from this video be that Grant Cardone is a giant piece of shit. Grant Cardone enables an international human trafficking family destroying cult. Grant Cardone through his donations props up David Miscavige and the Church of Scientology. Interviewers just have to understand that when you're talking to Grant about Scientology, if you're not going to push him, if you're not gonna push him on the facts, if you're not gonna push, try to push through some of his bullshit, you're just giving him an opportunity to promote this highly destructive cult. Grant actually profits, he personally profits, puts money into his own pocket by introducing people to Scientology. And what I'm saying doesn't just hold true for Grant Cardone, it holds true for any of the Scientologist celebrities who are out there pitching Scientology whenever they have a project to promote. People like Juliette Lewis and Kirstie Alley and John Travolta and Elizabeth Moss. So if you're going to bother asking a Scientologist celebrity about Scientology, maybe just be prepared to push back a little bit. All right, that's all I have on this for now, guys. Thank you for watching. Thank you to everyone who watches until the very end, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Okay, if you want to see my rock and roll songs, click right on this guitar. And if you want to see a, a different one of my videos, uh, oh, then you could click right in right here. If you have six, or not, subscribe right here. Bye! <laughs>